Number Theoretic Functions Part 3 Summing a Function over the Divisors of n Here we introduce the notion of summing a function little f over the divisors of n. Henceforth, let us define capital F and little f to be two number theoretic functions with the relation that capital F of n equals the sum of little f of d over the divisors of n. This is for the reason that the symbol d divides n under the capital sigma symbol indicates that we have to sum little f of d over all the divisors of n. This idea of defining one function to be the sum of another function over the divisors of n is very important in the study of number theoretic functions. We too will constantly refer to capital F and little f frequently in this part and in the subsequent parts. With the groundwork having been laid, we make a single theorem the focus of our investigations. If little f is multiplicative and capital F is defined by the equation given before, then capital F is also multiplicative. Curiously, the converse is also true. That is, if capital F is multiplicative, then little f is also multiplicative. The proof of the first statement is within our reach at the moment, but the proof of its converse has to wait its turn until the Mobius inversion formula is introduced in part 4. We will then proceed to prove the converse in part 5. To prove the original statement, that is the multiplicativity of little f forces capital F to be multiplicative, we need to pave the way with a smaller lemma. Here is its statement. If the GCD of mn n equals 1, then every divisor d of mn can be expressed in the form d equals d1 d2, where d1 divides m and d2 divides n and the GCD of d1 and d2 equals 1. Conversely, any divisor d1 of m and d2 of n, when multiplied together, produce a distinct divisor of mn for mn n co-prime. Let m equal q1 to the j1, q2 to the j2, and so on, all the way up to qs to the js, and n equal p1 to the k1, p2 to the k2, and so on, all the way up to pr to the kr. Then any divisor d of mn is of the form q1 to the a1, q2 to the a2, and so on, all the way up to qs to the s, multiplied by p1 to the b1, p2 to the b2, and so on, all the way up to pr to the br where ai is greater than or equal to 0 and lesser than or equal to ji and bi is greater than or equal to 0 and lesser than or equal to ki as was shown in part 1. In that case, we can allow d1 to equal q1 to the a1, q2 to the a2 and so on all the way up to qs to the as and d2 to equal e1 to the b1, p2 to the b2 and so on all the way up to pr to the br. The uniqueness is the easiest part to prove since we notice that the GCD of d1, d2 equals 1 and if either one of them have a different prime factorization then so does d equals d1, d2 leading to the production of a different divisor. Also, as d1 divides m and d2 divides n, d1, d2 divides mn and so d is definitely a factor. With this lemma being proven, we are now ready to proceed. To show that f is multiplicative, we evaluate capital F of mn where GCD of mn equals 1. So capital F of mn equals the sum of little f of d over the divisors of mn. But now we fall back on the lemma we just proved by expressing d as d1 d2 with the same conditions as in the lemma. This is used to convert the sum. So f of mn equals the sum of little f of d1 d2 as d1 divides m and d2 divides n where we sum over all combinations of d1 and d2. By the multiplicative nature of f we can write the sum of little f of d1 d2 as d1 divides m and d2 divides n equals the sum of little f of d1 multiplied by little f of d2 over the same conditions. Here we split the sum and write capital F of mn equals the sum as d1 divides m of little f of d1 multiplied by the sum as d2 divides n of little f of d2. This is essentially a factorization as d1 and d2 independently traverse the factors of m and n respectively. More importantly, each value of little f of d1 combines with each value of little f of d2. Hence this idea of every term combining with every other term is well captured by a two-term product. Within each parenthesis lies the sum of the function of the divisors of m and n respectively. And every term little f of d1 into little f of d2 is produced exactly once from the two-term product. Thus the factorization we have written is entirely valid. For instance, when m equals 10 and n equals 21, we have that d1 equals 1, 2, 5 and 10, while d2 equals 1, 3, 7 and 21. Any combination of little f of d1 and little f of d2 
will produce a term in the sum of little f of d1 multiplied by little f of d2 as d1 divides m and d2 divides n. But each of these combinations can be formed by the product f of 1 plus f of 2 plus f of 5 plus f of 10 multiplied by f of 1 plus f of 3 plus f of 7 plus f of 21. Once we reconcile with this fact, it is easily seen that capital F of mn equals capital F of m multiplied by capital F of n. This proves that f is indeed multiplicative. Applying what we just proved in this video, we can generate a faster proof that tau and sigma are multiplicative functions. We notice that tau of n equals the sum of 1 over the divisors of n and sigma of n equals the sum of d over the divisors of n. Understanding why this is so just requires one to look back at the definitions of sigma and tau. Tau was defined to be the function that counts the number of positive divisors of a given number n. Hence if we add 1 as many times as there exist divisors of n, the answer we will retrieve will be precisely tau of n. This is the meaning of the first equation. The second says that in place of adding 1, we add the divisors of n. This is the definition of sigma and so the second equation does indeed equal it. The next step and the most vital one is to realize that both 1 and n are multiplicative functions. Indeed, let f of n equal 1 and g of n equal n. For co-prime m and n, f of mn equals 1 but f of m and f of n are also 1 so that f is multiplicative. A similar exercise completes the proof for g. g of mn equals mn and g of m equals m while g of n equals n. Once again, g turns out to be multiplicative. With these two facts in hand, we can readily make the claim that tau and sigma are multiplicative just by falling back on the theorem we just proved. Tau and sigma are defined as the sums of f and g respectively of the divisors of n. And what's more is that f and g are multiplicative, by which it follows that so are tau and sigma. Now that we have completed our introduction to multiplicative functions, we are ready to begin talking about the Mobius function, eventually leading to the Mobius inversion formula. This is the subject of the next part. Thank you for watching. The credit for the theory and the proofs goes to David M. Burton, who is the author of the book Elementary Number Theory. Credit is also given to McGraw-Hill Education India Private Limited, who have published the Indian edition.